it's time for the B A Q A A the B A Q A. What you say? The B A Q A with Mandy. The B A Q A with Tiffany. The B A Q A A. What's up, BA fam? Mm-hmm. Welcome to BAQA, where, where we take your, your favorite brown girlies answer your business, career, personal finance questions. But we are not your mama. We are not your doctor, your attorney, your financial advisor. We are just merely your fave, non related financial girly cousins who are really smart and cute or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, we want you to tap into the people that you do pay for advice. So you take us with the smallest grain of salt, okay? Okay. If you have a question, though, you can ask us. Go to brownambitionpodcast.com. Click contact us. Sign into the DMs on Insta, Brown Ambition Podcast, the BA Podcast on Twitter, and Brown Ambition Podcast at gmail.com. Zuckum. All right, Mandra. You want to, um, which one you, you want to go read one first or you want to do the second one? The well, second one is kind of messy, honey. You feeling messy or you feeling Ooh. inspirational? Oh, I'm kind of feeling messy. Okay, okay. I'll start with inspiration. Okay. 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 This is from, well, you didn't say your name, so we're going to call you Jam Rock because you live in Jamaica, which I love. Oh, good night. I love this. West Indians, why y'all do that? Good night. Hope all is well. You know how, you know, know, they answer the phone. Good Good night. Good day. I love it. Anyway, good manners. Good night. Hope all is well. I have a question. How do you know when you're ready for your next big financial step? I'm mm. looking to either attain a home or car how, or car. However, the home is the higher priority. Currently, I have no loans, student loans paid off or debt. Okay, Jamaica. I'm also investing and have savings. Sending love from Jamaica. I, first mm. of all, Jamrock, we love this for you. I love it. We I love this love for you. you. That you are in a position where like, you know, no debt, you have savings. And so this yeah. is more like a mental shift. So how, like Mandy, when you are... You know, like when you, before you bought the house with Enrique, even I remember when you guys were contemplating the Tesla, like Mm -hmm. what is the mindset shift that you like tussle with in order to make those changes, those financial changes? How do I get my husband to agree with me? (laughs) (laughs) It sucks when you have to make big financial decisions as a unit Mm -hmm. because we each may have different ideas of when re- what ready is. Mm-hmm. And I feel like the first thing is if you're by yourself and it's just you, yourself and you, um, that almost makes things easier. I don't know if you have a family, but as, as far as like, when are you ready for the move? The beautiful thing is that you've created a space where you are financially prepared. Mm-hmm. Um, I think for you, it's like, let's take the next steps to find out what would that look like for you? Do you know where you want to have a house? Do you know what mm-hmm. your budget would be? Um, do you know the process for getting a mortgage? I don't know what that's like in Jamaica. Is that mm-hmm. where he's from, right? Jamaica? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, what would that process look like for you? And then, you know, I don't feel like it's a, it doesn't also doesn't have to, may not have to be a house or car, mm-hmm. um, but which one serves you and your lifestyle right now? Renting is fine. Renting is cute. You want to have a nice car and keep renting. That's, you know, you can do your thing, but you know, if you decide you, one person, you want to like invest in some property, then that can be the better decision. But I think it's just about you not getting stuck in analysis analysis paralysis and mm-hmm. actually like thinking through what the next steps would look like for you in either scenario. And I feel like the house is the big one that mm-hmm. is going to take more than just going to a dealership, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. So if I was on my own, Husband is currently fighting about card number two. Mm-hmm. I'm thinking I'm a long-term person. I don't really care about cars so much we i know that there's plenty of households in america that have two kids and one car Mm -hmm. and they're doing just fine i was one of those households for a long time we were doing just fine it would be more convenient sure but i'm doing just fine so for me i'm I'm able to be like eh, car not so much let's like focus long term on our next property um but we're just at a stalemate right now, <laughs> but we're saving for a thing. We just don't have an agreement on what the thing is, you know? I love that. So maybe that's part of the advice too, is like, you know, even if you, you haven't decided which is going to be the thing, continue to save and just say, this is my savings for, call it big goal, you know? Mm-hmm. And I don't know how it is in um, Jamaica, but here in USA, USA, as my cousin would call it, cousins would call it in Nigeria. USA. Here in USA, um, if you purchase a car and you get, um, like you finance the car, it will prohibit you from likely getting a home for some months 
because they oh, don't like yeah. to see that you recently got into new debt in order to. So just, I don't know what it is like in Jamaica. Maybe it's totally different. Um, I also know in many countries like Nigeria, for example, you buy the land first and then you actually build your home. So I don't know if it's like that in Jamaica. So what I would say is that in the United States, at least there are classes that you can take. Um, not so much for the car, but definitely for home ownership. So see if like, I don't know if your local bank offers that. I don't know how it works. And Jamrock, right? Like if it's, if there are classes that you could take to understand the process of like what it looks like to purchase a home and what some of those expenses might be. So maybe I like to, whenever I'm trying to, in the the shift, because to, to me at your core, at the core of your question, it's like, how do I make decisions or how do I make decisions when I'm ready to go to the next level financially? And first mm-hmm. things first, I like to ask myself, what's the desired outcome for me? How do I see my life? How do I want it to go? I want to be in a house. I want to have this car. I want to whatever. And then to, second is I like to gather information. I like to reach out to friends and family that own homes. Maybe I want to take a course or a class so I can start to frame my decision based upon what I want and two, this additional information. And then three, there has to be a moment where you take the leap and say, I'm committed to this to this choice. But you're in a great position. So I just want to give you a round of applause, um, Jamrock for setting yourself up to get whatever it is that you want. There's no right or wrong. However you want to rock it out, rock it out. So if you do end up buying a home in Jamaica, I'm just saying me and Mandy would, you know, oh no. How close is it to the beach? That's all I'm at. Exactly. Right. I because had a Jamaica switch with my husband. His family lives in the middle of the, the island. Okay. <laughs> I said, oh, he's me? Tri- <laughs> Dominican Republic vacation, Yo. but no beach. Wow. They tricked you. They said, go. <laughs> <laughs> now we have but to Jamaica, plan a whole separate vacation after this. <laughs> but Jamaica, I would say, is one of the most beautiful islands. I've been like a couple times. It is so gorgeous. Mm. And, you know, the people that be thinking I'm Jamaican anyway with my locks and whatever, you know. So you just let me know. I can, I can blend right into family. <laughs> Sidebar, you know who has the most incredible locks? Ava DuVernay. Oh. Have you seen yes. the images of her? Oh, yes. stunning. She looks stunning. She's just so beautiful. I wonder how long. Yeah, stunning. Yeah. Um, but thank you for your question. And uh, just yeah. one last thing. One of those items, house or a car, is an investment. Is an investment. The other mm-hmm. one, typically not an investment. Mm-hmm. That's all I'm just gonna say. It's fine if you want to get the car. Just know that you're buying a depreciating asset. The yes. one exception is when we actually made money on our car by selling it during the pandemic. But that's because of like yeah. crazy, weird economic yes. situation. That rarely happens. Yeah. Rarely, rarely. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Right. Unless you buy some classic car or something like that for a collectible. But yeah. Oh, this is true. This is true. Oh, but now you're drinking a, can, a whole can of worms that I am not prepared I to know. get I know. Let's just reel it on back in. Either way. Yeah. Come bring me But back. let us know. Either way, what you decide. Yes. All right, Jamrock. I love that name. Jamrock. <laughs> I know it's not your name. Okay. So I'm I'm going to read the next question. Well, we're going to take a break. A blizzy break. So we can pay oh, some bills. Slow all the way down. Oh, you're right. Oh, 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 I'm going to I've been on stuff sometimes. After eight years, I finally remember things. Me too. <laughs> I love it. I knew you'd get here. <laughs> All right. So we're going to take a break, guys, and we'll be back in black and browner than ever. Okay, BA fam. We are back after our break with our second question. This one is from Anonymous, and Tiffany has promised me it will be messy. Just a little messy. So, so we're going to actually call you. Um, well, I, I feel like you, it's not fair because you're not messy, but I want a mm-hmm. nice, messy name. Like, what should we call? Like, so that it's way. The messiest of them all. Uh... All I can think about is Marjorie Taylor Green right now in this moment. Yeah, well, maybe Nick we'll Cannon's just... kind of messy. It's all them kids. Oh. But that's not a... <laughs> what about remember Wendy Williams? What about if we call her Wendy? Oh, okay, sure, sure, sure. Because we know you're not messy, but it's messy like around, you know, surrounding. Okay, we can call you Wendy. Okay. Okay. All right. Wendy says, I'm a big fan of the podcast. Keep doing a great job. I'm a single mom who recently went from making 40K to 100K. Ooh, ooh. And I'm... Nice. And I made the mistake of telling way too many people about my achievement, <laughs> thinking that they would be happy. Oh, this is a good one. I told you. <laughs> Since then, I've had friends start counting my pockets. One tried to set me up on a date and Snapchatted the guy that he could use me. And several have been asking or assuming they can have money now or telling me how I should spend mine. What is the best idea to handle this scenario? My therapist said I should tell them that I lied about how much I make, but I don't think that's realistic. What kind of therapist? Also, as someone who is used to being pretty poor, what advice do you have for a big increase in income? 
Okay, these are... Oh, man, this makes me sad. I know. Wendy, Wendy, Wendy. Uh, yeah, you... Listen, I think we... You made you made an error. Mm-hmm. Um, I think you really need to... And I'm all about salary transparency. Don't get me wrong. Mm-hmm. But it has to be at the benefit of both people who are finding out. So, you mm-hmm. know, like, for example, if they can learn from you, you learn from them. I'm trying to help you get to the next level. There's an understanding that we're sharing compensation to... Like, I'm sorry, I'm answering the question that I just asked, Tiffany. I should have shut up and let you talk. No, 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 go, go. I'm like, like, I'm listening, like ooh, that's good. No, yeah. go ahead. <laughs> okay. I'm going to I'm like, why'd you stop? <laughs> All right. No, no, go. Yeah, so I feel like in this case, both people should be benefiting from this conversation. Mm. And when you tell just anybody what you make, you are giving them, yeah, you're giving them a piece of d- a data about yourself that can be used against you and you don't know how they're going to use it. And I'm really sorry that friends and family that you thought, was it just friends or was it family too? But, you know, people yeah. in your in your circle that you thought would be excited for you, you're finding out the lesson that a lot of people do, which is that people have a hard time and they're humans, right? So you can't really mm-hmm. blame them so much. But they have a hard time feeling excited because of the comparison thing that they're immediately going to do to what they're earning. And because they may feel, you know, insecure about where they're at in their life, they may lash out and project and cause you problems because they can't stand. They really don't like the idea that you're doing better than them. So yeah, it's it's, it's a good lesson for in salary transparency and all this talk that especially I do about, you know, being open about sharing your salary with other people. It's important because I think that that is how we can create a more equitable space. But do it with people who like there's a mutual benefit, you know, people in your industry, someone who you're trying to help level up, someone who's trying to help you level up, who's like a little bit more, you know, advanced than you, someone who's, mm-hmm. you know, in the same space you are and you're just trying to like, you know, get a sense of what to charge. A good example is I just got invited by a brand to do an event and I know a friend of mine also was invited and I slid into her DMs to ask her how the negotiations went because I was having a, you know, an interesting experience and, you know, she let me know how hers went and yeah, it's just, it's, that's Mm -hmm. different. I'm not going to get a brand deal and then just like go tell everybody and, you know, how much I'm making off of this or that and the third. And yeah, it's, people do not always have your best interests at at heart, Wendy. I'm sorry. And I'll say like one, I never thought about that. That when you're sharing, that was like a really good perspective that like, does it benefit both people? I never thought about that. Yeah. You know, um, one, I have to say, girl, this person that tried to set you up and to have this date run your pockets, I hope you block them expeditiously. Yeah. Is that like the girl who had her, what are those ugly shoes with make your toes look like oh. a Ninja Turtle? And then so they, the guy stole them and gave it to his girlfriend? Yes. Yeah. The guy stole the shoes on the date. That's like what her, like, was he told, hey, that girl's got these fancy shoes. You should ask her out. And then he like ripped her off and stole her shoes. Anyway, I'm just thinking. Yeah. Like, well, I don't know. Well, well, I don't, well, I don't know. I don't think so. I think she like met him on Hinge or one of these dating apps and, mm. you know, they went home and he was like, ooh, my girl been talking about them ugly shoes and stole them, which is so <laughs> oh, the ghetto. I mean, oh, first of all, though. I have questions about Those the girlfriend. The ugly issues. If your man brings home these shoes, no box, no nothing. They I'm look saying. Worn. Like, sir, where did you get these from? Yeah. And then when he asked you for them back, you weren't like, bruh, what's happening? And there's no little plastic tag connecting them I like just, at Marshalls when you get a great brand for less. I, you mean, know what I mean, well, maybe anyway. there's no box. Right, we Go really ahead. we sorry. We Wendy, we we off we so one, that person that tried to set you up, I mean, I I would hope. There is no second. We're not, we don't have to spin the block. Sis, it's done. We're not talking mm-hmm. anymore. You're not my friend. That's terrible. Like, yeah. you know, like, hey, date my friend. You can use them for money because she makes good money. It's one thing. Sometimes friends will certainly be like, ooh, this is my friend. They have a good job. Da, da, da. That's one thing. But like you specifically said, she Snapchatted them to say um, he could use you, child, you know? And yeah, as far as, mm-hmm. because I, I'm like, I don't. Your therapist suggesting that you lie. I'm like, girl, uh, I don't to know. Undo the damage. Th- I just they don't would... know that that's. I'm not a therapist, so therapists maybe weigh in. Did we ever encourage people to lie? I guess maybe for safety, for sure. Like you know, you have an abusive husband or something like that. Certainly, yeah. um, but I just feel like this might be a good time to kind of like reset friendships because. Mm. 
this is like, you know, there are certain things that like highlight who you really, who you work with basically. Yeah. And friends yeah. that are going to not respect the boundary and say, Hey, honestly, it makes me feel uncomfortable when you X, Y, Z. If, if a friend can't respect the new boundary that you're setting, then it's like, it's good. Thank you for showing me. Because I certainly, as my business has done better, it helped to reveal some people that when I was a preschool teacher, it was all good. And as I did better, even just from when I moved to the halfway hood, when I was living in, you know, um, <laughs> like uh, with Jarrell and like the halfway hood versus when I bought my house, you know, like the difference when people came over and the look on their faces, there are people who literally just stopped coming over. And I just remember being mm -hmm. like, oh, and, but I didn't mind it because it was like better to know that, you know, mm -hmm. that we're not aligned, you know, and not because I'm making more, but something, you know, you're just, we're just not aligned anymore. So I don't know about lying, but certainly setting new boundaries with the people in your life. And if they don't respect those boundaries, you know, realigning with other people who do. Um, and so let's talk about the, the money part though, which is the exciting part. First of all, girl, do we even say congratulations? Cause that's huge. Congratulations. Uh, oh yeah. I mean, that's you more, more than, than double. doubled your salary, sis. I hope you like, that's, I, I can understand why you want to tell the world because it's like, that's mm -hmm. incredible. That's life changing for you and your baby. Yeah. You know? So one, um, I hope you are maxing out your retirement accounts cause you ain't had that money before. Yeah. You know? So you have the opportunity to max first. out your retirement accounts, you know? Um, so one, I would like make make that my focus. I'm going to max out retirement accounts. Two, I would be thinking about what does it look like as far as like, you know, um, maybe increasing what I'm putting toward debt. Three, I would be setting aside for a cost of living increase, but not I'm I'm making 40, I'm living at this. Now I'm making 100, I'm living at 100. It's I'm living at minus my um retirement account max out, minus increasing a little bit what I put toward debt, minus increasing savings. When that's all said and done, then I can do a cost of living increase. So maybe it looks more like you're living at like 60 now instead of 40, certainly not 100, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. you know? So I would- Well, tax would, man ain't gonna let you do that anyway. Child. But you know what I mean? Like first <laughs> yes, and I foremost, know. whenever like big money comes in, I always have like, okay, what is retirement? What is debt? I don't have any debt anymore, but at the time, what is debt? What is savings? Once those are, are then, if there's money, as there's money left over, then then I use that as like, how can I make my life better? And I think if you think about it that way, it'll allow you to always live relatively um, safely below your means, but in a way that you still get to enjoy a better life, but one that you can maintain, you know? Mm -hmm. So that's what I would be thinking about. But yes, congratulations. Like, that's Thank amazing. You. And I don't want your friend's reaction to take away from... Yeah, that feeling of I did this for me and my child because yes. as a single mom, like, thanks for reminding me. I didn't, I forgot she was a single mom. Yes, that is life changing. Um, and I hope that, and also, you know, the thing about knowing someone's salary without any context is like mm -hmm. 100k where because 100k in New York, I'm Child. sorry, even if you're by your like, if you're a dual income, you making 100 or you're by yourself, you're not living large, no, like you're paycheck to paycheck. Yes. It's just true. You know, that's that's the sad truth about a lot of places. And it's not just New York. You know, even in Atlanta, I feel like mm -hmm. that would be tough or Charlotte or any, anyway. So I'm just saying without context. So um, that's another reason to keep, you know, your salary private, not, not telling everyone is because without any context for your lifestyle, the cost of what it takes. Listen, childcare alone can eat Child. up that paycheck real quick, real quick. And I wouldn't be surprised if you were like, I want to put my baby in a better daycare and all of a mm -hmm. sudden, where'd the money go? Where'd mm -hmm. my $60,000 raise mm -hmm. go? Um, yeah. So anyway, you don't want to trust people who don't, who don't, who can't think of money and understand it like that with that information. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm excited for you. And I was just going to say that the, one of the most powerful things I did um, back when I had more of a predictable income with my, you know, my, my biweekly paycheck and stuff is. I automated everything like Tiff was saying, like I automated mm -hmm. my retirement, automated my how much was going to go to savings because I knew what I was going to make every two weeks, automated what went where. And then everything that hit my checking account, I knew I could spend it. Mm -hmm. And it made me, it made it so much simpler that way. Mm -hmm. And for you too. So I, but I just made sure that I had set aside the money for savings and long-term before. things before all that. Because yeah. you should be able to enjoy and spend the money that you earn in the way that you yes. want to. And the but second in a way thing that, that it doesn't make you feel, because when you do that, what Mandy said, it's like, oh my gosh, the money that's in my checking can't, no, 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 because guess what? Retirement funded, debt mm -hmm. being paid off, savings saved. This money is my money. Eh, 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 it's my. So like, then it feels really good and you can actually enjoy 
the money versus like wondering. So yes, add automation to that mix of those three things. If you do those things, yeah. And honestly, you're just going to, you know, like it's different. Like it's your, like you said friends, you didn't say family because sometimes it's hard. It's your mom, your dad. It's, it's hard. Yeah. But friends, child, no. You like, you know, like I'm not saying that you, you can't lend friends money here and there. But a lesson that my friend Cabral did teach me, if you are thinking about lending from here and there, because you might have a friend that you're like, she was there for me. I want to be there for her. The, the first thing he always asked me when I'm like, someone such and such asked me to borrow money. I remember one time he asked me, will it solve the problem, Tiffany? So for example, one time um, somebody was like, hey, I am late and behind on my mortgage. Can you loan me say like $700? So, and I said, in my head, I asked, cause I thought to myself, will it solve the problem? Meaning like, if I give you the $700 this month, like if you, if what happens next month? And I said that like, so I know you don't have your mortgage money for mortgage because you don't have a job right now. So what happens next month? Oh, I don't know. I'm going to have to think about the next month. Well, then that, that means this money doesn't solve the problem. That that means we're throwing $700 into a hole for a house that you're likely to use money going. Now it's another thing. If you're like, Hey, Tiffany, you know, like I want to borrow money because I have a thousand dollars left to pay down, pay off my car. And then I'm car note free and I'll be able to pay you back incrementally. You know, the three months I used to pay my car note that solves the problem. Because it's like you purchased the car, the car is purchased, it belongs to you. You can pay me 200 bucks a month until you're paid off in five months with me. So I think about that always that like, you don't ever have to lend. But if I do even consider lending, I always ask myself, will this solve the problem? Or is this just the delay and I'm throwing good money after something bad? You know, so just keep that in mind too, as your friends kind of dig in your pockets. Ciao. But in your case, protect yourself and your and your child. Yes. That's that's good money, but not give money to everybody who, you know, yeah. is going to ask you for it. They may think that you have money, but you have to be firm in knowing what your goals are. And I think it's even more important to, important to protect yourself so that everything is paid first. Like you pay yourself, you save for retirement, for everything that you need long term. And then with your leftover money, if you want to give some away or whatever, fine. But mm -hmm. um, get clear on like what is going to bring value to you and joy for you and your child and i would spend money there first yeah absolutely well girl wendy girl mm -hmm. child the ghetto no they didn't try to set you up mm -hmm. i don't even fight and i want to throw hands to use me use for what like can you imagine just, mm -hmm. mandy, mandy have you ever been in a physical fight with someone not my brothers or sisters? No, like you're like you know, like a like a at school or whatever. So oh you, you wanna... yeah, when I was in like um, I used to have to defend my little brother. You guys met him on a couple podcasts ago. Drink. He had a he has a big mouth. He always has. <laughs> so I used to fight his battles for him until I learned to use my whip lash. My, really, I, I can't... my my saber tooth tongue. <laughs> Girl, to that's all I had because wounds. I don't have hands. I don't have yeah. hands. Like I yeah, I def when I, I was like in elementary school. I fought like little boys in the playground who would tease me. Betty was like, "It's what's up?" Because <laughs> <laughs> it was, it, it was, uh, it was like Lord of the Flies at my house sometimes on summer vacation. Okay, so, but now no, I'm a pacifist. No, no of course not now. But I'm just thinking because I've never like outside of like my sisters, of course, because you know you're just tussling. But I was like, you know, I was never a fighter. I was, I'm not gonna lie, I was a big scaredy cat. So I'm talking about, I'm gonna throw hands, girl. Where in the air? Like wave them like they don't still care. <laughs> like I don't. I've never been. Yeah. I am in the biggest of punks. Okay. So I'm like, I used to, my best friend Veronica was half my size. She was like five zero. Yeah. And like, I'm like, let me go get Veronica because y'all play with me. Yeah. <laughs> and so that was she me was for like, my little brother. <laughs> exactly. Wait till my big sister hears what you say. <laughs> No, but I yeah. love that. I just was curious. I'm like, does Mindy, did Mindy ever tussle in her youth? In her youth? <laughs> don't judge a book by its right. Don't run it. That, what that means is, see, I'm going to talk big talk now because y'all don't know how to fight that. What that means is don't roll up on Brian and Bishop in the streets, okay? <laughs> That's what that means because, exactly. you know, I, I don't have you. hands. But I will call the police and, you know, Mandy might resurrect, you know, Hansy Mandra. <laughs> I'll tell you what the time I attacked the little kid with fire ants for my little brother's, uh, oh my for God. my little brother. Yeah. Cause he came from my little brother. You know who you are. And I'm sorry. <laughs> that was not nice of me to put your backpack in a fire ant hill. If you're from Georgia, these New Yorkers, y'all don't know about fire ants oh up here. God. Yo, <laughs> that could have got me some prison time. I feel like oh if I was an God. adult, that's Yo. assault. Anyway, right, we'll see you guys next week. <laughs> bye. For BAQA. Okay, bye, y'all.